Alright, this is a uh, blurry noise. I've been recently asked about a bit of my AI movement in uh, the game I'm presently making, or specifically my uh, knockback ability and how I got it to work. Just to kind of show you what I mean. So, this is it working properly, and the person uh, right now is having this problem with it. As you can see, the event just goes flying, and it's nice, even if it ignores collisions and can even fly off the map. Reason being is this guy has my own created my own uh, movement scripts for this guy and that town fellow right there is using some of the pre-made uh, the random motion in this case and when you try to combine your own movements with the, a lot of the event action scripts you tend to get a lot of wacky weird messed up results like that so I'm not going to go into too much detail I had a hard time trying to find a way to explain this all basically but basically if you're trying to doing a knockback and that's your problem, you're going to have to create your own movements. And I'm going to just kind of overview some of my scripts here to show you, uh, basically give you an idea of how to structure uh, your own AIs. This isn't going to be too detailed. There's a lot to explain that I found it was really hard to get into it all in less than 10 minutes, so I have to make some like five or six videos on it. So this is the the main loop for the enemy actions is uh, the actual action which is placed onto the event itself so it's applying together these three are all loops now this condition is because I have uh, two types of AI one that will just act uh, after a certain amount of time and the other one will uh, basically check to see if the uh, enemy is within a certain area and then attack basically smarter now basically yeah the other one is uh, uses this loop and uh, my smarter one uh, this check is actually embedded within the movement so they're working together to create a bit more of a smarter enemy okay now here okay so this is kind of the one of the AI scripts basically there are actually quite a few checks and parts to this I'm just gonna go around the uh, total structure this is looped it's a basic uh, area check. If you've seen my tutorial on how to do uh, area collisions, the same exact principle. I have a property for every uh, enemy that's called follow, which is basically going to be the area it's going to react to. So in the case of cluck, I think it's something like four. So if the player is four steps away from the the enemy, it'll start reacting to the player. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's a death check. Not really. So basically, this is where it all goes down to. Uh, in this game, instead of uh, actually calculating and uh, creating a formula to actually do the check to see where the basically player is in relation to the enemy, I use this kind of little cheat here, the face leader command. So basically, you notice it's here twice, and I'll explain why. Because, uh, for example, uh, Let's say the player is standing right next to the enemy. What it's going to do is face the player right here. And then it's going to do the attack check, basically. Check the counter. And basically, also depending on the type of attack it's going to do. It could be an area attack or it will only attack the direction it's facing. So if the player is within that area, it basically sends those uh, coordinates to another check, which basically double checks it. I did that so that way the player could actually evade enemy attacks so that way basically the enemy wouldn't be quite as aggressive and basically you could do that because anyone who's done a button trick knows that the loops can move really fast and the enemies could just go really crazy so after it attacks basically we'll check where the player is again and basically say it's chosen to move east and the player happens to be occupying that space this check is going to basically be checking for that if it's occupying the same space it will not move just you know, abandon the notion of moving and then continue on. If not, if the player is not occupying that space, it will move towards the player. Uh, the reason I do that is because, um, what you call it? say it did execute the east move and the player was in the way, it would basically be stuck and it would wait until the player would move, so my attack check would not be executed. So if the player just stood absolutely still, basically be invincible. This is a, a time delay. Basically, uh, doing them anywhere between 10 to, to uh, 
150, you should use intervals of 10. Uh, in this case, it's a bit weaker, uh, slightly more aggressive enemy. I guess you could say, I guess medium. I want to cluck to be a bit kind of on the annoying side. I attack a lot, but I have a really weak attack. So that's how I kind of delay some of the actions. That's my doo -doo -doo. I'm gonna go a bit into. I passed it. So this is basically uh, how you could create a follow loop. Uh, well, in this script, this is a check to target the enemy, and then these are the calculations per enemy. But basically, how this code works is you need a, a variable for an x and a y axis, and Basically, you're taking the location where you want to move to and subtracting it from the present location for each axis. And what this is going to do is either give you a positive, negative, a positive value, negative value, or a zero. And of course, depending on the value, that determines the movement. As you can see here, the killer dot doll x total is equal more than one. So it's going to move east for the negative value. Same thing for uh, the y-axis, the negative is north, the positive is south. If it's zero, that means they're occupying the same axis. And if you're actually going to want to put like the northeast, northwest collisions, now what you have to do for these guys, you have to take the opposite axis and put it to zero. So y total is equal to zero. Basically for uh, these guys. Now for the bias directions to determine the collision is quite simple. You take your say, y for north, you want to go northeast, you take that same uh, basically condition and then you nest it within the east condition. So basically you're adding those two conditions together to determine the bias directions. And that's basically a follow loop. Oh yeah, another cool thing about this is uh, the value you're actually getting from here is also how many steps away the player is. So if it's three, they're three steps away. So you might be able to find a funky use for that too. Uh, there's one more thing I was going to mention. And step, step, step. Oh yeah, I remember. So you know it's uh, set to negative one because I want uh, my killer doll to occupy the same space as the enemy. If you want, say, your uh, event to stop right beside the enemy, just set it to twos. Simple as that. And zero, basically, it's just not going to do anything. Because I have no conditions for zero. And that's basically a, a little review. I hope it helps clear some stuff down. I mean, it's actually a pretty complex system and it take quite a bit to get through it all. So. If you have any questions, just ask, and I'll try to help you out, and uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and uh, have a good day.